okay, four minutes left. Um, I'm gonna finish this talk about uh, application design, talking about uh, something called promises, okay? Uh, throughout our talk, we've seen that this kind of code repeats a, a lot. Uh, you basically attach your event listeners to things that emit events, and then you run the thing that will eventually emit the events, right? So here, for example, we can see that our providers, as we discussed earlier, launch an event called done and then we handle that okay but what happens when we are with we have this awesome requirement in our application that um a hundred providers need to fetch a hundred asynchronous requests to a hundred different servers and then when all are done i need to show the results okay so um, we have two problems with this code first of all we need to attach the event listeners beforehand. That means that we need to know beforehand all the code that is going to be run, and that sometimes it's not the case because we might be loading JavaScript on demand and stuff like that. And then uh, we need to know when all providers are done, and we don't have any uh, straightforward uh, way uh, to do that. Okay, we can do hacks. We can return uh, queue IDs. We can return something that we can pull, but then um, it's not very uh, elegant. Okay, and then we will end up doing a nasty hacks trademark, uh, which are actually nice solutions. Okay, but um, the cool thing about this is that in the 70s they had this problem and they have solved it already. Um, in JavaScript, they've been around since around 2007 with the Dojo library and they are getting more widespread now, but basically they are called deferreds, or you might have heard of them as futures or promises. They have lots of names, but the, the pattern is, is basically the same, okay? Um, I think the when.js library, which is a very vanilla JavaScript one that I especially like because I work on the framework team, so we need to find code that is um, uh, framework agnostic. So basically, a deferred is something that we can uh, uh, understand as an event with memory, so it knows when it, that it's, it's been fired before. So we can attach behavior to that event after it's been already fired. So think of this if um, DOM ready on DOM ready was a, was a promise, OK? That would be pretty awesome. Uh, basically, the first are two parts. One is the promise, which we were talking about. That is what you return when your lengthy function is going to run. And then to that promise, you can attach all your, all your handlers, OK? And then a resolver, which you keep privately in your, in your own method to say, uh, to notify everyone who is listening to that event that is being successful or a failure, OK? This library also provides synchronization mechanisms, of course, which could, that's the, the solving the second part of the problem. So I can wait for all promises to be uh, fulfilled, some promises to be fulfilled, any of the promises to be fulfilled, and then you can chain promises, OK? So uh, imagine when I found out this, and it was like, yeah, it's been around for a long time. And I just read about it a couple of weeks ago. So I just had like a lot of remorse uh, of the code I had written. Uh, I prepared two examples, but we don't have time to show them. So I, I invite you to download the talk and uh, just uh, fiddle with them. They are JS fiddles, so you will be able to modify parameters and stuff. The first one is like subscribing to an event that has been fired seconds ago. And the second is like having a hundred different providers doing slow things. And then you are able to see, OK, I want to know which are the 10 providers that that are successful and stuff like that. So you're going to be able to configure that and fiddle with that in the fiddles, OK? Um, that's pretty much it. Download the stuff. We are hiring. And <laughs>